Hi, welcome to the Gear Garage. My name is Zach. This is my little internet show by Why Water Stuff. And today I'm going to continue talking about reading water. This is a really hard thing to talk about. I'm going to do my vet very best. I kind of think of it like, like teaching art. I mean, I think of reading water as doing art. For me, you know, when I, I love reading water and I look downstream and it's sort of like an art form to sort of figure out and maneuver my way down in a creative, unique way. And so I feel like reading water and, and running rivers personally is a very creative pursuit. And there's not always one way to do it. Um, there's not always a methodology. A lot of it comes from experience, but there are some basics. I'm gonna share with you my thoughts about them through this series of, of videos. So in the last episode, I talked about the basics. There's hydrodynamics, basically shooting the V, cutting the C, pretty basic stuff. Um, for me, intermediate level reading the water is just basically adding rocks. Rocks make it harder. Like, it could be rocks, it could be the, the underlying geology, it could be other stuff, but basically it's rocks. And rocks create holes which we're generally trying to avoid. And so I'll talk a little bit about what rocks do here. And, and, and what I have here is the side view and then what we see downstream. And so, first of all, when water goes um, into a rock, let's just say we're at that level right there, and if it hits the rock and it's just a normal rock, it actually kind of rides up on it like this and creates what we call a cushion. And a cushion is something actually with an oar boat. And, and this video is mainly oriented, to, oriented towards rafters, but you know, kayakers could probably use it too. An oar boat can hit the front of it and kind of ride up and slide off, right? If, you're, if the front of your boat hits it, if the side of your boat hits it, it's typically bad. That's how, how wraps and flips occurs. So there's a rock down there with a big cushion on it. It's really hard to avoid. So I'm going to try to hit it with my bow and slide off of it, but I don't quite hit it straight, hit it sideways, and, and this was a near catastrophe, but I came off luckily. And here's that same rapid with a little bit more water, which makes it really easy to miss. So I'd much rather hit a, a, a rock like this with my bow, but that's a separate topic. From the front, you see this, you're coming down, the water's at this level, and there's just sort of like a cushion, like that. You see a nice cushion, you go down, oh, and then it kind of piles up on the rock and you know you can slide off. If the rock is undercut, which means there's something like this, then a cushion won't exist. Then the water kind of goes kind of straight at the rock and goes down under it. That's a dangerous thing. So if you don't see this cushion here, that means it's a rock you definitely want to avoid. It could either be a sieve, which is a pile of rocks that water goes through, super dangerous, or an undercut rock. So as we're looking downstream and you see water up against a rock, you're looking for a cushion. So headed into here, there's a big rock on the right with a cushion. We also call it a pillow. The, rock, the water's kind of riding up on it. There's a little bit of boil. And I can hit it with the bow of my boat, and it kind of wants to slide right off, which is really a nice feature of... Of, of cushions or pillows. Here's another nice cushion on that rock in front of me and I can just kind of point at it and pull and slide right off. As the water gets higher, and let's just say it gets right here, right, that's a, that's a rock that's barely out of the water. And it's a rock your boat can ride up on and get stuck. This is pretty obvious stuff, right? It's something I'll use a lot to actually purposefully get my boat stuck. So here I am with my friend Dougie Fresh, perched on a rock in the middle of the river. And we did this because this rapid ram's horn is very continuous and a raft had just flipped in front of us and we wanted to slow down, let the rescue happen, and also kind of just talk about the line that we're gonna take um, as we do that same move. So, you know, shallow rocks can get you stuck on accident, but they're also really good if you want to get stuck somewhere on purpose. And as we get ourselves off, and we're looking downstream, you see other rocks that are all, that one right to the right of us that's almost covered. That's a potential perch rock, which is, can be a good thing or a bad thing if you don't want to hit it. All right, so we're, we were here, kind of just a rock that's like, you can get stuck on to like here where it's barely under the surface. And, and those rocks, a lot of people um, try to avoid because your boat can get stuck on them as well. We call them sleepers or things like that. And you basically, sometimes you can't, can't see it, but your boat will hit it and stop and kind of turn around off of it. 
So this is a shallow rapid on the Illinois River. The entrance is shallow, it's low water. And I'm just dodging rocks or just under the surface. You see the one in front of me, I just missed that one. And now I'm trying to find a route through a bunch of shallow rocks. And I'm looking hard to find the route, but it's difficult and I end up getting stuck. And usually when I get stuck, I look back upstream, make sure that the boats upstream you know, see me, I'm not going to do much until I know that they're either going to go through the rapid or, you know, right here I'm communicating, do you want to go? They're saying no. So I'm going to slowly get myself off. I'm thinking a lot about, like, what happens once I get off? Where do I want to go? I already have my line, so I, I'm taking my time here, making sure I get off in a really controlled manner so that I can make this next move to the right. And there's more shallow rocks, and this is where knowing what you can and can't go over really helps. I'll be, I'm pushing now, so I'm going to have some momentum, and there's some steepness to the rapids, so it'll, it'll draw me over some of these shallow rocks. Plus, it's a urethane boat, so it slides over things. Pretty nice. And then here at the very bottom, going back to a, a little bit earlier, there's a nice cushion off the wall. If you see that, that pillow or that cushion on that rock right in front of me, that's a classic example. If you're on a urethane type boat that's slippery, it might slide right over. If you're on like a high pylon boat that sticks to rocks better, you might get stuck. And also if you're running your tube soft, you can run over these things. If you're running your tube super hard, you might get stuck. So when you're doing like low water middle fork of the salmon and you have soft tubes, you might go right over rocks like this. Whereas like if your tubes are really hard, you gotta be a little bit more careful. So as the water, you know, one unique thing about rocks too is if there's a weird thing in the rock, Behind it, let's say there's something sticking up here that's kind of a nasty feature, it'll create what's called a rooster tail. And so if you're looking down, you'll see water sort of spitting up off that rooster tail. That's a good sign that that's not a rock that you want to go over. So um, from there, the next thing I sort of think about as the water gets higher is the water sort of goes over the rock drops off quickly and then sort of recirculates and then it kind of keeps going down here and this is what people call a hydraulic or a hole there's other names for it but basically it's where the water drops off fast and backfills and there's all kinds of different holes there's steep ones there's not steep ones we're not going to go into the details but what you see downstream is you know you see what's going on here let me try to describe it you sort of see pretty obvious paths here and there's like a little hump and you don't see what's beyond. So down here you might see like a V, you might see a V, but here there's information that's not there. And you might even see like water, like a couple of spickles of water from the hole. You, may, you probably won't, but you could. But basically if you look ahead, you can't see. There's like a little bit of a hump and something you can't see. That's a good sign that there's a hole downstream. So here we are at Red Side Rapid at around five feet on the middle fork of the salmon. And as Ellie's looking downstream, right in front of her, there's, there's a hump, and there's a hole there. And then further to the right, there's another little hump, and she's going to split in between the two. So to the right of her right now, there's a hump there without this missing information, and there is a hole behind it. And this is the bottom of the green wall. You'll see a couple humps. There's one on the left, and there's one on the right. And I'm going to split between them. And there's still holes, but the humps told me where there were bigger holes. This is another example in the Illinois. If you look straight in front of me, a little bit to the right, there's a hump there. That's water going over a rock. There's a hole there. Obviously, I missed that. And I'm scanning downstream now. And in this right channel, there's a hump in the middle. So there's obviously a hole in the middle. So I'm going to want to go either right or left to avoid the, the bigger part of the hole there. And here, Mark Rivers, see right in front of him, there's a little hump. There's missing information. He misses that on the left. There's another one on the left of him right now. Again, there's, he doesn't see everything, so he goes around it. And then this is called Earthquake Rock. This rock below him, he sees, so he's trying to pull to avoid it. And there's a nice cushion up on that rock. <laughs> And to me, there's all kinds of different holes, like I said, but things I want to know is can I or can't I run this hole, right? And you can't always tell, but some cues are, uh, I would call one thing a smiley hole. 
if the hole goes out like this, there's usually exits around the side, right? So if a hole is smiley, you know, if you go into the hole and you get sucked into it, there are typically ways out. Sometimes holes, and hopefully this makes sense, sometimes holes are frowny. And what that means, as you went over it, it's really hard to get your boat out of the hole. You have to almost work upstream to get out of an edge. Because typically the way we get out of a hole is on the sides. Um, and then also you want to be really wary with holes. You know, if one side is blocked off, if this is a cliff, right, you can't get out that side. And so then it's a little, some, something to be a little bit more careful about. Or if both sides are blocked off, then that's a particularly dangerous hole. Because if you go into it, there's not an X on any either side. So you want to try to avoid holes that are blocked off on both sides. So again, as the water gets higher, you know, you see a little hump and that's a hole. And I think for a lot of us reading water, this is what people are looking for. This is what people ask, man, how do I see these things? And, and again, you're just, you look downstream and you just see a little bit of a hump and you can't see off the other side. That's typically something you want to avoid in all crafts. And, and for me, as I get to know rivers better and I'm practicing, I start practicing going through some of these holes to see what I can and can't go through and sort of getting some, some judgment on my end um, based on what I, what I can and can't do. So hopefully that makes some sense. And then as the water gets even higher, it's less of a, a hole and kind of a breaking wave and goes down. So, and, and those breaking waves can actually stop the boat too. And what you see here, if you're looking down, is just sort of like crashing white. You, know, you usually see the crashing, there's a water level, there's some crashing white thing. And again, that's a judgment call. You typically probably want to avoid crashing white things, especially if there's some sort of V down either one of these paths behind the hole. Here again is Mark Rivers heading into Marble Rapid on the Middle Fork, and there's no V. You have to kind of crash through the wave. This wave is big crashing wave is caused by bedrock, and he sees it and just powers through. So that's some quick in intermediate level uh, reading water stuff. You know, there's a lot more to reading water, but I really, as I still am thinking about it, I feel like trying to diagnose where the holes are or where there's underwater rocks that can mess with you is sort of a, a key feature in, in water reading. So that's it for intermediate water reading. If you have questions, thoughts, things to add to make this better, please uh, leave comments, let me know, and um, yeah, see you in the next episode.